the audiences are so much more sophisticated that they are, and often they're uh, a, a step ahead of us, or we get to do wonderful things like plant uh, Easter eggs and set things up and people read into things that we didn't think they were going to read into or they discover things that we were hoping they were going to discover. And, and and we get that time to to let those stories and those uh, characters evolve, which is, is very exciting. I, I've been very fortunate to work with excellent showrunners. And one of the strongest things about these showrunners is they hire people in every department and they inspire them to reach beyond their own abilities and they and inspire them to do great work. And I think a really wonderful showrunner uh, will, if they deliver a great script and then they let people do their jobs and they're going to guide them and they're going to give you notes, but they really want you to come to the table and bring your expertise and your ideas and your suggestions and they want to be challenged. And on Game of Thrones, for example, the David and Dan, they write these amazing scripts, but they want directors to come in and say, okay, we've got this, let's take it to, to this level. There's two people that uh, produce the show uh, logistically, and that's uh, Bertie Caulfield and Chris Newman. And they came up with a unique way of how to execute and, and shoot Game of Thrones. And so what they do is they have two crews at, that are shooting simultaneously, and one of those crews will go on distant location. They're based in northern Belfast, and then a crew will go to Iceland or, or Morocco or uh, Spain or Croatia, and then they have a giant one-liner that's color-coded, and you fly into the location that you're going to shoot with the actors that are needed for those scenes. So it's, it's, a, it's a different way of making television and a lot of shows really big shows that shoot in multiple locations have adapted that now and it's 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 cross-boarding and so as directors we need to know all 10 episodes even though we're shooting two episodes each we need to know obviously what comes before creatively and what comes after especially in this case because an actor might be shooting a piece of episode 10 the day before and then they walk in the next day and they're shooting a piece of episode two uh, when I was first asked to do the deuce I had a lot of conversations with David Simon and George Pelicanos because I wanted to make sure we were on the same page, which was we wanted it to be very real, very honest, not gratuitous, and, and that's exactly what David and George wanted. And I had to really think about it and how what was going to be my contribution and what was my way into the show? How was I going to interpret it? And I was having a conversation with George Pelicanos, and he said to me, you know, Michelle, we don't want the 2017 version. We want the 1971 version. And that really clicked for me because I went, right, this is pre-AIDS. This is when prostitution was thought of differently. This was a different time in New York City. And we really wanted to, we knew we were doing a very controversial story. We're, we were talking about misogyny we were talking about the start of the porn industry as we know it today and we really wanted to be honest and and real about it and and that's David Simon and George Pelicanos specialty so for me I love authenticity and I, I I think that what I what I realized when I read the script was and I studied this this time as on the surface, it seemed like a very op opportunistic time in New York City. There was uh, a lot of energy, and it was exciting, and there was a lot of things for the taking. But then when you got behind closed doors, you saw the harsh reality of the consequences of these actions and these choices that people were making, and they were not always good.